Minneapolis City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us with our program this evening. We're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in our cities. Because it is important for good government that there be ideas and information going back and forth with the city council and the mayors and the city staff and you, the residents. If you haven't watched our program before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area. Probably a mayor or a city council person who will update us on what's been happening and what's going to happen. And then if it's your city, be sure to jot down their phone number and their email and be in contact with them if some of the issues are important ones to you. Tonight, we're very happy to have John Elder from New Hope, my city council. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had you on before, John, and we're glad to have you back. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. And you know that I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself out to the wider audience. Okay. My name is John Elder. Uh, I've been on New Hope City Council uh, since 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lived in the community since 1988 and uh, raised three children going through the uh, Robinsdale, Armstrong, uh -huh. uh, Plymouth, uh, Sunny Hollow Elementary. Right. So I uh, had, had great experiences with that. I've been a soccer coach in the community, a Cub Scout leader, a Boy Scout leader, and um, so I've been very, very active. I was also a New Hope police officer uh -huh. uh, from 1999 to 2006. So you, now I asked you to think a little bit about if people are looking to buy a home somewhere, mm -hmm. what, why would you tell them they should buy it in New Hope? Well, New Hope has very well-maintained residential areas. Um, a lot of trees. Uh, it's just, it's just a, it's a beautiful area. It has an incredible park system. It has 18 city parks uh -huh. with over 200 acres of green space. Uh -huh. um, it has a nine-hole golf course, par right. three golf course. Right. It has a uh, indoor ice arena with mm -hmm. two sheets of ice. It has a will have a new 50-meter right. swimming pool uh, that is under construction uh, at this time, along with uh, another swimming, uh, along with a swimming complex that uh -huh. will go with that. Um, we have a long-term pavement plan that really assures that the roads are, are well kept oh, up. Yes. Um, th that's really, that's a real serious quality uh -huh. of life issue. And, uh, and people do not ever get assessments for their roads. It's in their taxes. And so people aren't getting hit with a ten right, or $15,000 right. assessment. We uh, have a very well respected police and fire department. Uh -huh. And um, we have a strong business community and uh, you know we've been very very lucky to be able to get some of the, some real good businesses oh, in. Oh yeah. <laughs> now we thought we'd talk a little bit about because you're doing some remodeling and work on your parks. We are. And how do you, how does New Hope decide which park needs work or how do what's the rotation or schedule or plan or? We usually replace the oldest park next. Okay. And our parks last between 20 and 25 years. Uh -huh. um, our parks maintenance crew are really good about keeping them uh -huh. uh, uh, in good shape right. and safe. That's so, important, right? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Now, the, the people that live around the parks in the immediate neighborhood get involved in the process. Maybe you can tell us about that. They do, and that's one of the really uh, interesting, interesting things about New Hope. Um, most cities just come up with a dollar amount and they, the, the parks directors then contact the playground companies and said, okay, hey, we have $60,000 to spend, right. um, bring us what you, can, what you can do for $60,000. Mm -hmm. And what usually happens out of that is these playground companies come in with the lower quality <laughs> equipment sure. and the things that have really not even all that much play ah. value, but they can fit more of the activities ah. on there. Okay. And therefore, you're getting a playground, but it's not really very much, it's, it's largely not going to be what the community ah. wants. Right. In New Hope, they bring residents in okay. and um, they do a survey, find out what they like, what they uh -huh. don't like about the park, what they would like to see. And um, some, some have asked for walking trails. Ah. Some have, uh, have said, you know what, we really want slides. Uh -huh. um, and so then they're brought in and 
they meet with a playground vendor. Uh -huh. We continually use landscape structures. Okay. A very, very solid company. And, uh, it, and they talk with the, uh, the individuals, uh, the residents, right. and they then do a design. And they come back a second time, go over the design with them. And so it's really the community Ah. picking the park that right. fits, that right. suits for them. And uh, I usually go to those meetings as a city councilman, um, not for input, right. but just to listen. Ah. And it's so much fun to see the, you know, the, the children of the neighborhood coming forward and, right. and actually getting, getting to have yeah. a voice. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, it's a very great inclusionary tactic mm -hmm. by, by our Parks and Rec Department. Just hats off to them for that. And then you're going to make some changes to Sunnyside and Bayesian Park, and, and you're kind of looking to do the two together for efficiency? Absolutely. Uh, Sunnyside is going to get a whole new park. It's going uh -huh. to be a new container. Uh -huh. uh, it's going to be all new playground equipment. It's going to have the engineered wood fiber, picnic tables, a shade oh. structure, uh, or shade umbrellas. Uh -huh. uh, this one will have a, a, a walking trail, uh, a basketball court, and a portable enclosure. They coupled that with the Bayesian Park because uh -huh. there's going to be a new basketball court ah. there uh, and also a portable enclosure. Sure. And the nice thing about that is, is by bringing those two projects together, we're able to save money in, uh, in getting that done by doing both courts at one time. Oh, sure. Um, we also saved uh, a fair amount of money uh, because we applied for grants. Ah. And we the were, other side of the coin, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And we were uh, lucky enough to receive a $25,000 ah. grant for playground equipment and a $10,000 grant from for uh, the basketball hoop. Ah. Both of those were Hennepin County Youth Sports oh, Grants. Right, right. And uh, we've been very successful in getting grants through there. And uh, the residents of New Hope and the people that come and visit our parks are certainly benefiting from that. Right, most definitely. And then the JC's Park that's on Independence and roughly about 30th is going to be redone this summer. Now some work was done over the winter and there's going to be some changes in that park too. Absolutely. Um, we've already had the, the resident meetings okay. and uh, that was done over the winter and uh, we were able to, to really drill down on what they wanted to see in a park. And there's going to be uh, a new playground, new uh, container, uh -huh. wood fiber. The nice thing about the, this wood fiber that you were seeing in all of okay. our parks now, we're moving away from the sand because sands are not wheelchair accessible. Oh, yeah, then they can't get into any of those equipment, right? Correct, correct. So the engineered wood fiber is a shredded huh? core of a hardwood tree. Huh? And it kind of knits together to give a oh. surface that we can get uh, walkers, right. wheelchairs, right. Uh, and other things across it. It's uh -huh. ADA accessible. And so uh, we're moving to wood fiber, the engineered wood fiber uh, at all of our playgrounds. Now let's switch to road construction, because this is something all of our cities have to go through. So we'll just kind of upgrade or give people a little bit on what's happening and why. Now what streets in New Hope are going to undergo this process this summer? Um, Wind Park Drive is the main one. Okay. And that's a street that goes from Winnetka, south of 36th, so it's right behind the, that shopping mall, right. um, and it goes to the east, curves around and goes up to 32nd. Okay. And that is where Coburn's, Coburn's right. Delivers right. is out of and a lot of other um, industrial mm -hmm. businesses and they are completely tearing out the roadway uh -huh. the curb the gutters uh, and they are complete full replacement of water main storm sewer replacement and the installation of a water treatment uh -huh. uh, program that's um that's going to be really helpful there's a lot of um, uh, salt uh, that comes through that oh, area right, right. and they want to treat the water before it goes uh -huh. uh, goes further down into the mississippi so um, we're also uh, very, very active with our seal coat mm -hmm. and fog seal project. And all the streets that are gonna be involved in this can be found on the New Hope website okay. uh, under the um, construction page. And then the people who are the, where the road's gonna be constructed by them, they find out like almost a year ahead of time, right? Absolutely do. People want to, um, 
a lot of times want to remove plantings, uh -huh. want to remove uh, any sort of landscaping right. that they have there um, so they can put it back in later. Yeah, because the first 15 feet. The first 15 feet belong <laughs> to the city. Right. And, uh, and so it's, uh, we got caught by not giving enough notice uh -huh. and uh, really realize the impact that that had on residents. Uh -huh. And again, it's the dialogue back and forth right, with right, the residents right. uh, that really helped us learn uh -huh. that, you know what, we probably didn't do this as well as we could have yeah. or should have, uh, and the residents deserve that. And so uh, we've kind of changed how we're doing it. We give, boy, like a year's notice. Uh -huh. uh, and so people can really plan for this sort of thing. So it's, again, we learn from our residents. Right. And now you've talked about uh, the Wind Park Drive being down to the bottom and build the whole road back up. Mm -hmm. Then, But roads after that point in so many years, then you can do a process called mill and overlay. Absolutely. And people out there might not have any idea what that is because I learned that along the way. Why don't you, you explain what the next step is and how long we're approximately in between. Yeah, yeah. It's about 15 years okay. and they'll do a, what they call a mill and overlay. Uh -huh. And they come in and they go curb to curb, actually where the curb meets the yeah. roadway. Now, so it's not the right. actual bump of the curb, right. but it's the actual where it meets. And they grind down two inches. Okay. And they remove all of that. When it's down to the lower inch of the, of the roadway, uh -huh. they're able to do utility work. If they need to do utility, oh, sure. you know, repairs, things like right. that. If there's curb and gutter that need to be replaced mm -hmm. or, you know, little spots where they can right. where fix that up. Uh, and for a couple of weeks, it, it's down to the lower amount. Uh -huh. uh, and then they come back through and they put two inches of, of asphalt on top of that. And uh, it's a really been a, a great way for us to keep our road mm -hmm. stock in good shape and, uh, and while still right. being able to save money. There's times where we have to replace roads. Oh, Wind right. Park is, is absolutely right. the, the, a good example mm -hmm. of that. Um, but most of the time, we, we, you know, we're able to do a mill and overlay, and it extends the life of the road. Right. Efficiently. 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 Absolutely. Now, uh, New Hope and Crystal have a joint project on that Wind Park Drive. How does that work out between the two cities where they bump up against each other? Well, they, uh, there's a lot of planning that goes into it, uh -huh. and um, Crystal is going to pay for their portion of the roadway. So the total cost is X amount, okay. and Crystal has a, a percentage of right. that, and I right. think it's about 7.5%. Uh -huh. And so they're covering 7.5% okay. of the cost. We're covering the other 92.5%. Right. And, and both both are part of the process. Absolutely. You have a, some kind of joint agreement on Absolutely. That, right? Yeah, there is uh, there is an absolute ton of, of uh, legal work that oh, goes right, into that. Right. Um, we're friends with our neighbors right. to the east. We still go through all the legal work mm -hmm. oh, to make yeah. sure that there's, there's someone didn't miss right, something. Right. Okay, let's switch gears again, mm -hmm. and we'll switch to redevelopment in New Hope. Now, one of the projects that got done during this past, oh, since January, I think, mm -hmm. if I'm right, are the Ironwood Apartments. They're yeah. on Bass Lake Road right by the golf course. Yeah. And maybe you can describe the projects for us. Ironwood is a four-story, 182 luxury apartment building mm -hmm. that was built on the site. It's Yukon and Bass Lake Road that uh, the city bought the, um, the buildings that were on right. there, previously uh, apartments that were horribly dilapidated oh, right. and, uh, and uh, were sinking. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the city bought those and uh, then we ran into the recession issues right, right. and nobody like could build, right. nobody had the money. And so we've sat on that land until mm -hmm. now and uh, and you know we really hats off to the previous councils mm -hmm. that you know made that decision to buy that because now we have this beautiful oh, building right. uh, which offers a type of housing that New Hope didn't have right. and we have a lot of apartments mm -hmm. but boy we didn't have any luxury apartments right. and these are great these are great apartments I've, I've been through it a number uh -huh. of times um, it's a, a $43 million project uh -huh. that began in the summer of 2017. 
and started allowing people in January 1 of 2019. Right. And um, I believe they're full. This council agreed to do a TIF district uh -huh. to help offset some of the uh, authorized expenditures, right. land, building acquisition, site improvements, things like that. Yeah, and things that's that approved. prepare the land for the builder, right? Exactly, exactly. So that was, um, that was a really a neat, mm -hmm. neat thing for us to be able to present. And then it kind, of, it kind of fits in because luxury apartments, golf course, right? Absolutely. People think that connect the two together, right? Yeah, and they should. Yeah. They should. Now, now Mart is a new gas station that's yeah. coming in, and it's on Bass Lake Road. Maybe you can tell us about some of the distinguishing features about that gas station and how it came about. Yeah, um, these are the same owners of uh, a gas station um, that is just west of the city. It's okay. on Medi it's on uh, it's on Forty Second, just west of One Sixty Nine, <laughs> and they decided they wanted to come to New Hope, uh -huh. and uh, they they have opened up a five thousand sixty square foot building, which will be a convenience, which is a convenience uh -huh. store and a gas station. Um, it opened in December of 2018 uh, on the 7200 block of Bass Lake Road. They're constructing a 780 square foot car wash uh -huh. um, and uh, that will be completed this summer. And the really interesting thing about this is, is that it has a water retention yeah. and it takes that water and uses it for the car wash. So it's gathering rainwater filtering it, making sure it's clean enough and is being used to wash cars. Also, they are retaining the water from the car wash oh, yeah. and recycling and reusing that. It's a recycle reuse. Um, it's a, that's an $8.4 million project uh -huh. that was built on a, uh, a site of a really underutilized retail building. Right. Now, I wanted to spend a little time, because very recently Duck Duck Days, which is yeah. New Hope's community event, was on, yeah. and there was some difficulties yep. this year. Yep, there Maybe were. you can tell us about what we, and why and how. And Friday night uh, of Duck Duck Days, things went beautifully. It was exactly what Duck Duck Days uh -huh. was meant for. It was a family event, fireworks at 10 p.m., um, great night. Weather was perfect, a little warm, but perfect. Yeah. Um, and it was truly, it was picturesque right. duck duck days. It's our 50th anniversary right, this year. Right, right. Saturday, about three o'clock, we started seeing droves of youth coming in ah. and teenagers. And um, I mean, a, a great more, number of them. More than normal. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And um, they started fighting. Mm. And they were fighting amongst themselves, running around, chasing each other, tackling each other, uh, and really causing kind of pandemonium. Yeah, yeah. And, and it took away the family feel to this. Right, right. And uh, they were intentionally baiting our officers uh -huh. to try to get them to act inappropriately. Uh, I walked in and there were two girls. You could tell they were fake fighting. Right. And as officers approached them, uh, a number of kids pulled out their phones and started recording. Uh -huh. um, there were people that were ejected from uh -huh. the uh, from the duck duck right. days, and it got to the point where there were so many of these youth that they stopped letting anybody in uh -huh. for safety reasons. Oh yeah, right. And that's sad. Yeah, that's it unfortunate is. It on is. so many levels. You have the lions who right. spearhead this. Um, and you put a lot of work into it. Oh, the, for months they've right. been meeting and getting right. things done. You have the city folks that have been working on this right. for months, uh, women of today that are involved. And you have the vendors, the Frankies that, you right. know, have invested a great deal of money sure. to have product there and to be able to right. serve. And all of a sudden, you know, you really don't have the families yeah. there to do that. So that's a loss for them. And. And for the residents who weren't able to get in, right. and that was, 
that was really the thing that bothered me the most is, oh, I is I see. was out as a councilman I was there and I was I was talking to people that were being denied admission right. and they're like we just want to come and see the fireworks yeah. um, and the kids came out and that it was, that was their intention was to disrupt it right and that's again beyond unfortunate and I believe that this is largely social media driven uh-huh you no one has been able to tell me why we have um, droves of right, kids right. from St. Paul ah. from Bloomington <laughs> um, and so again I believe this is largely social sure. media driven I don't have any any facts it behind that. It kind of makes sense though. Absolutely. Right. And so uh, we will have meetings here in a couple of weeks uh, and we will really do a, a hot wash on uh -huh. this and look to see, okay, what was it? Where were the issues? What were the right. challenges? Right. Um, I saw the security plans in advance. Yeah. I, I didn't see any link, right. in, any any you know weak spots in the armor. Um, and so it really, it was super sad. Yeah. And now we need to look to see how do we move forward for our 51st year? Oh, right. Is there right. a 51st year? Right. And there's a lot of things being being brought about, discussed. Do we do a series of smaller events to get uh -huh. out into the community? Um, yeah, I know the Lions are 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 willing to to look at sure, everything, sure. and uh, and so it, it's going to be interesting to see how this evolves. Do we not allow un unaccompanied minors in? Yeah. Um, so there's yeah. So there's a lot that that we have to discuss and, and decisions that have to be right. made. But the most important thing is, is that um, we have the right people at the table. Right. We will have the right people right. at the table. We have people that are not afraid to have hard conversations. Oh, good. And there are people that are that are really dedicated to the cause and really want to see this come uh -huh. back. And if we can get Duck Duck Days back for year 51, right. um, I know that's really a goal. And so. We want to make sure that we're we're meeting the the wants and desires right. of the of right. the residents, uh, because they were horribly underserved right. this this year, through no fault of the lions or oh, the city right, uh, right. or whatnot. So um, that was that was kind of the the thumbnail sketch right. and long term of of really what transpired, uh, what happened, and uh, what we're going to do moving forward. Sure. Well, and, and these kinds of events happen in society, so mm -hmm. now looking for answers or what to do, uh, it sounds like you're off to a good start. Absolutely. As I said, it's it's always an honor to work with the Lions. Mm -hmm. um, they're just such an, an incredible group for our community. Most of the Lions, about half of the Lions don't even live in New Hope. Uh -oh. um, but it's, these are guys and gals that just are out here and they're working to, uh -huh. to make New Hope right. a better place, right. and so we're, we're grateful. So things moving forward and a little update for people that are wondering what was happening there. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. There are. I've gotten a great number of calls. Yeah, so I appreciate your sharing that with you the bet. audience tonight. You bet. Now uh, uh, program, I guess program is the right name. That because affordable housing is important mm -hmm. and it kind of ties in with the scattered site housing program in New Hope to mm -hmm. some degree. Yep. Maybe we, you can tell us what's involved in the scattered site housing project. Give us a little background on it. Absolutely. What the city of New Hope does is we look for homes that are distressed properties uh -huh. and we look at what it takes to acquire them. Right. And in 2018, we acquired five properties five houses, right. six properties, we ended up with a vacant uh -huh. lot. And we looked to see two things can be done with these homes. Uh -huh. They can either be demolished right. and the land is set for a builder to come in and purchase from us, and or we can do a rehabilitation. And that's where we fix up the house and then we sell it. And so, uh, we ended up with one lot that was big enough to split into two ah. lots. So we've ended up with, uh -huh. with uh, six houses last right. year out of this. And it helps revitalize our neighborhoods. Oh, definitely. You see, what we see is that when one home really picks it up 
and really start sprucing things up, it's almost contagious. Uh -huh. Other right, neighbors start right. to do that right. too. And so it's been really, really helpful uh, for us to be able to do this and, and people are appreciative. Now, we use EDA money. Uh -huh. uh, and EDA stands for? Economic Development Authority. Right, for our guests out yeah. there. Uh, the Economic Development Authority. Uh -huh. And we get money from uh, the county. Right. And we are able to use that money for things such as, uh, as this. And we understand that we may lose money on some of these, uh -huh. but it's certainly bringing in additional tax dollars. Oh, definitely. It's, it's revitalizing the mm -hmm. community and our housing stock, and uh, it really has found to be money mm -hmm. well spent. And we've just got a few more minutes. What are some of your hopes for the city of New Hope as you look on into the future? Well, uh, fiscally we're doing well. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's really important. We're uh, absolutely meeting our reserves, uh -huh. and so uh, that's, ne that's nice, that's important. Right. Um, I'd like to see our taxes slow down. Uh -huh. Now, one of the things that people often don't take into account is that their assessments that they would be paying for parks and roads right are in their every year taxes. Yes, and it's, smaller amounts. Yes, smaller amounts. And it's cheaper for people to be able to do it that oh, way. Right. And uh, so people need to understand that when all of a sudden they're looking at, you know, their their taxation. Right. And they're like, well, this is higher than, Yes, yeah, it's a you know, little bit higher than another yep, city. Yep, right? yep. Um, but that's, again, right. you're not going to get hit with that ten or $15,000 right. road assessment. All at one time. <laughs> right, right. So. Uh, I want to see us continue to uh, be interactive. Mm -hmm. I want to see the city uh, continue to grow. Uh, I want to see our housing stock continue to move in the direction oh, it's right. moving in. Uh, our infrastructure is, is vastly improving uh, year after year. Um, you know, we're, we're lining our sewer right. pipes. That's, it's gr that's incredibly extending the lifeline of those pipes. Um, so we're doing a lot of the right uh -huh. things. And I want to keep going on the right track. Uh -huh. And what's super important is um, the mayoral position. Oh, right, right. Um, we have such a gift in, in Kathy oh, Hemken, she our does mayor. An excellent job. Um, boy, you, you, know, you talk about people that really put so much into it. Mm -hmm. And every day she's doing meetings. Right. And, and, you know, uh, people have asked me, why, why haven't you run for mayor? First of all, <laughs> for me to run for mayor, I would have to think I could do better than the person right. that's there. Right. And that's, there's not a chance. <laughs> there's not a chance. She is such a cheerleader for she this is. city, for she this is. community, for our staff. Um, and I know that's brought business in. Right. I know Hy-Vee looked at what this council was like, we are good to work with. Right. Our city staff is good to work with. I'm, I know that's bringing in businesses. And well, so I've people got to here. thank you yes. since we got to the end of our time here. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I really appreciate your spending time and your experience and sharing it with our audience out there. Thank and we'll you. ask you to tune in next week for part two on New Hope Issues. We're glad you've been with us and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Bye.